Hi there, I'm Robin Hill. I'm the Director of Breathing Colours and I met Melissa Reed Devine, who uh, we're talking to today 10 years ago when she was exhibiting at Breathing Colours Gallery in Balmain. It's a real privilege to be with Melissa here today because this is her workshop and gallery and studio and it's filled with her creativity and also of her, of her colleagues because she's very supportive of them. So I guess I want to first thank her for her time, sharing her time and her work with us as we talk about her journey, her style and how she goes about creating her work. Two things about Melissa as well, she, her paintings are luscious, extravagant, warm colours, full of colour and body and vitality, and her prints are fine, very detailed work. And so for an artist to have both elements, I think is sensational. And that's of course what Melissa is. So here she is. So first of all, tell us a bit about what started you on your journey as an artist. Have you always been an artist since you were born? Oh, all children draw and paint, don't they? So I can't say, I've been drawing and painting since I was a child because they all do that. Yeah. Um, I actually, I dabbled with art in high school, but I didn't stay because I was too frightened of the tough kids in the art class. <laughs> I would be too. So I was a bit very shy and retiring back then. So um, I didn't do any art until, or any lessons uh, until... I'd grown up, had a you know had a young family, and I was stuck in Darwin, which is a lovely place to be stuck in. But at right at that point, I needed to get out of the house, so I started taking art lessons. My God. And it was like I came back from the first one, and it was like the light went on. It was like an epiphany moment. It was like, oh, I can do this. <laughs> Isn't that fantastic? Yeah, wow. yeah. So awesome. that was. 1997 to be exact oh, was when I took my first art. When I think of your style, I think of the kind of work we see here and the work you've had in the gallery and online, which is the bold, colourful, optimistic, enthusiastic, passionate person that you are. So did that style emerge pretty quickly? Yes, I, th <laughs> I think so. Um, I mean, when you're starting off painting, you want to paint everything. You want to you want to do all the different styles and movements and use all the materials. You know, pastels and charcoal and mixed media and and printmaking and watercolors and and everything and oil painting. And um, my my style that I'm known for really sort of came out when I was in a hurry painting for a show and I changed to acrylics um, because they dry quicker and um, and it was just it was just the way I think p personal style is you like personal handwriting it's mark yes. making yeah. and it's the way your hands move and it was just the way that I like to you know do the finishing touches with the brush and I thought that's nice I kept going and um, and it just sort of developed, really. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, and colour has always been a thing. I mean, who can not look at things and just be <laughs> enthused by colour? Yeah. yeah. So I just wanted to show that. Indeed. So that enthusiasm and colour is, I guess, what I, I you know, no, notice in your work as well and have always really loved. So shall we just have a quick look at this work in progress? <laughs> <laughs> Which is in progress because <laughs> it's a, a bit about how you start a piece and work at it. Yeah. And the other thing as well, artists work at something for as long as it takes until it's done. It's not something I understand that you kind of knock it over, you know. Yeah. So things emerge and change. Yeah. Do you want to give us a little bit of, you know, the progress of this one? Uh, well, this one is... You know, works in progress can be quite private. Oh, because, no, no, sorry. No, 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 we're not doing that one. <laughs> no, that's what, no, but they can be because sometimes it's it's the way we're working out how to do a, um, a painting. It's a process. And sometimes you make mistakes and you go through them. You make more mistakes. You find areas that you at work, you paint over them <laughs> by mistake or on purpose. 
Um, so for me, it's I have a plan. I, I know what I want to paint. I want for this one, for instance, two birds um, sitting in amongst some blossom. But um, it's not totally planned because I like the happy accidents that might happen. I'm hoping. <laughs> and, um, and it's just, I just like playing with paint. Yeah. yeah. And, and I'm not a particularly quick painter um, because uh, they start very loose and um, this is my time to splash out and be all over the canvas and have fun. And then when I finally get in from my head, how I want the image to go, it coalesces and I become a little bit more planned in brushstroke. And, and then, you know, a couple of weeks later, it might actually happen. <laughs> and I, I love that you start with, you know, the splash, the play, and then use that to see what happens next. You don't kind of go, there'll be a twig here, and you know that from the beginning, that, you know, that sort of emerges. And having watched your work for a while, you know, I can see that that's what happened. I love it. Melissa teaches, by the way, and we can do a little promo for that at the end. And do you want to show us one of your finished pieces to give us a sense of we go from the playful beginnings and colour to a completed one? So talk about this one for us. This happens to be probably my most favourite genre of painting is landscapes and trees and rocks. Wow basically um and it's just a it's just a joyful sort of exploration of my local bushland um i live live out on the hawkesbury here and um there there are wonderful sandstone rocks and trees and i with the with my brush stroke i try and it's the flicker of light and color ever moving you know against the sky and I generally don't have a lot of sky in my paintings because I'm always surrounded by the trees. Yeah. Um, and I'm always looking up at the trees, looking for birds and, and what have you. Um, well, or only birds, I hope. Birds and owls and... Well, yes, depending on what time of day it is. Uh, oh, there might be a snake. Could be a snake. Could be a snake, yeah. But I don't see them. The dogs scare them all away. But, um, but yeah, so I'm just... Uh, it, and it's the shape. It's all about shape. The wonderful, big, strong shapes of the rocks, and the I'm speaking like a teacher here, uh, and <laughs> the um, verticals of the the trees, and then just the decorative um, brush strokes to signify the colour and the light, mm. colour and movement, colour and movement. Yeah. I've always been besotted with Melissa's rocks because <laughs> she does. Thank you, Robin. No, absolutely, because she does. Purple rocks and pink rocks and orange rocks. And so, um, and and the rocks, the way she paints the rocks gives the definition of the, the faces of the rocks, you know, the undulations, and the way trees grow through them. Or uh, So th there's something magnificent about the way Melissa paints rocks and the the birds and trees thing one of the first shows that Melissa had at Breeding Colours was a hoot because um there were multi there were beautiful birds uh what were they Rosellas or oh is this the long painting yeah uh yes I think they were um they were a type of parrot. Yeah. yeah, magnificent coloured parrots flying through the trees. Yeah. And I used to love to say to every customer, tell me how many parrots you can see and I'll give you 10% off or whatever. And people could never count the number because they were peeking through the foliage, uh, hidden a bit or in plain sight. So it was a wonderful way of getting people to look at the work and really appreciate it. And the movement that you bring to the to the landscape as well, and I think the the way you do the rocks contributes to that as well. So people get absolutely mesmerised by the the, the colour and the um, the passion in the work. And I always say to people, take a piece of Melissa's home, and you're taking home the optimism and and joy that she brings. So. Well done, you. So here we are at the printing table. This is the printing end of town, and Melissa's going to talk us through what she does and the process. 
Um, I'm really intrigued by this and I just want to look at the whole thing, but I'm going to resist. Off you go. All right. Uh, print making for me is a time of meditation. I move away from the paintings. They're big and splashy and colorful and I immerse myself in fine line. And this is what I start with. So I draw the design on a, a plain block. It's in grain wood. It's very hard and it takes a very fine line. And there's a wonderful history of it um, being used in original book illustrations, which I adore books. So I love the history of that. And it's, like I said, it's a time of meditation. I carve and, um, and it's very precise, so totally different to my painting style. And then when the, when the design is done, I roll it up with the ink and use it on the press, which is behind me, and um, run an addition. I don't do large additions because for me, it's, I'm very into the process. So I've designed, I've carved, um, and the printing side more is, oh, well, it's the finished work, you know, here it is, <laughs> have, a, have, a, have a print. But um, at least I can do half a dozen or at most maybe 25 of a, of a print. And um, I just love tree. Um, and lino cuts are wonderful as well. They're, they're easier to carve out different tools. Sometimes I don't even use the proper tools. I use a Stanley knife. Uh, if you're careful, you can cut really good lines. I, I love Margaret Preston. So I did a Margaret Preston series where I would carve out still life and hand color them. I don't have a hand colored one here at the moment, but the colored one here is more a pochade uh, in, so blocks of color done with the acrylics and then printed on top with the lino cut. I, I love process and I love the history of them. So I do a lot of personal study. It's meditative, it's, it's my time. So mm. a print from me is, uh, is not, there's not a lot of out there. The, the other thing I love about Melissa's work is the subject matter I find really easy to relate to. You know, there's the dog, there's, uh, there's Merlin over there, there's, um, you know, precious vases, there's flowers. And each of these, um, what are they, astrology? Oh, the, this particular um, series was uh, Zodiac Still That's Life. Right. So I set off to do a Still yeah. Life. Uh, but in a, with 12 of them, so each for signifying one of the zodiacs. And so there's another one of the cat sitting on Melissa's favourite chair. There's um, favourite kitchen items. So that it's, I find the subject matter very easy to relate to and customers are drawn to that um, as well. Yeah, yeah there, I think my subject matter is different with printmaking. It is more domestic, more yeah. illustrative. I, and the things I see, cat sitting on the chair, a still life, um, a hamburger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're, um, I think it's my previous love of and um, history of loving books and the little black and white illustrations in books. I grew up with that and loved those. So they probably come out when I'm doing my printmaking in, in their subject and style. And there's a, there's a lot of humour in Melissa's work as well, in both in her paintings and in the prints. For example, the hamburger is Taurus, is the Taurian symbol. And of course, you know, the thing about Taurus is sensuous, loves food, music and all that kind of thing. So that there's, um, there's humour and humanity in Melissa's work, which I really enjoy. And I enjoy talking to customers about that. 